you have a really fascinating background. Tell us a little bit about your career journey. Uh, sure, it's, it's been a long and winding road. I, uh, I, I really knew from the age of about nine that I wanted to be a writer. And, um, and so I went to Oxford to study English literature. And then when I graduated, I was still pretty young. I was about 20. And I decided that I would uh, try to write about literature and great ideas. And so I, I wrote an article uh, that I sent off to five different magazines about the relationship between two famous writers, Joseph Conrad and Ford Maddox Ford. And I get back this buff colored envelope with a copy of the Spectator magazine with my article in it and a check for 70 pounds. And I thought, wow, this is it. You know, I've made $100 wow. or something like that for a week's work. <gasps> and, uh, and so that kind of started my career. And, and then, much to my surprise, having decided that I would be this very literary uh, writer and would probably become a, a legendary novelist, discovered actually that I fell in love with business and investing, which was a, a total surprise. And so I, I moved to New York in my early 20s. I went to Columbia Journalism School to do a master's degree in journalism. And I suddenly found myself becoming increasingly obsessed with covering business and, and the stock market partly because the stock market is just a, a fascinating game. You know, it, it's one of these areas where by using your intelligence, you can kind of outwit other people. So I was fascinated in that aspect of it, much as I've been fascinated by horse racing as a teenager. Uh, and, and then, uh, you know, there's so much sort of ego and power and ambition in the world of business. And so I started mm -hmm. to think, well, wow, this is an incredible story. So I, I started writing about business for magazines like Forbes and Fortune and the like. And then, sort of much to my surprise, I ended up getting a job in Hong Kong as the deputy editor of the Asian edition of Time. I'd never even been to Asia before. Wow. And, and then I, after a while, I got promoted, so I became the Asia editor of the magazine. And so I had this incredible job where I was overseeing these wonderful reporters, writers, and stringers around you know, China, India, uh, Korea, Pakistan, all of these extraordinarily interesting regions. Then I got a job editing the European, Middle East, and African editions of Time. So I moved to London, spent a few years there, I spent some time at Bloomberg as an editor at large, which gave me the opportunity to report in places like Saudi Arabia and Russia. And then about five years ago, I made a, another total shift and became a, um, a writer of books. And so over the last four or five years, I've written three books. So I would say the common denominator has been that nothing has ever stayed constant. I've, I've had <laughs> constant change over the last 20, 25 years. And the other thing I would say that's been constant has been that I've always failed to predict what I would do next. At every, at every stage of the game, my, my career sort of took an unexpected turn. So I've, I've just totally given up on predicting what will be next at this point. You know, and it's funny because career planning, you know, so many experts will talk about how you need to be envisioning your goals mm -hmm. from for five years, you know, but clearly, I don't think you can. I mean, it seems to me, I, I talk to my kids a lot about this because I have a 14-year-old and a 17-year-old. And, and the kind of careers that we thought would exist don't really exist don't. anymore. And so I, I often say to them that I think the most important thing is, is to develop skills. Because if, mm -hmm. you know, for example, if you learn a couple of languages, if you become totally fluent, or if you become an extraordinary writer or public speaker or whatever it might be, you know, it'll stand you in good stead at some point. Because mm. what I've found over the last 10, 20 years is <laughs> the industry of journalism is just so totally different. How could you predict that, that uh, you would need particular skills?